Hey guys, it's uh, mid-January 2020 and uh, it's that time of year where I can actually do an unboxing video. <laughs> I mean, could do an unboxing video any time of year, I guess, but I buy so much of my equipment used that it's kind of rare that I end up actually by, um, doing unboxing videos of new equipment. But what happens around this time of year is... I usually have the spoils of whatever it was that I scored for Christmas from the missus. And this year, she comes to me every year and asks me, well, what do, you, what do I want? And I always have to try and think of something. And this year, I thought to myself, hey, you know, I think I'd like to try one of these new cordless angle grinders. So I did some homework and some research on what was out there. I saw a lot of uh, you know reviews of different ones, pros and cons of each, and I ended up settling on this model, the Walt. So um, this is the this particular kit is the DCG 414T2. Now, important thing to note about this kit: um, this was purchased off of Amazon, and what is in this kit is the um what's supposed to be in this kit anyways is going to be the grinder um the charger and two batteries this is the this uses the new flex volt 60 volt lithium ion um i did a little research about that too because i was kind of intrigued by it and it come to come to find out they're calling it a 60 volt but it's actually what they're doing is they're taking almost like three of their 20 volt lithium ion packs and putting them in the same uh case so what this is supposed to do is give you a lot more runtime and uh sustained power according to this chart here which is interesting is that this is supposedly compatible with the 20 volt, the 60 volt, and the 120 volt lithium ion pack, which is a big pack that they use on like uh, big tools like chop saws and that. So I'm kind of skeptical about whether or not that's the case. So, anyways, this is the unit that I decided on. This unit sells at um, Home Depot for $330. That seemed to be the price just about everywhere, was around $330. Before Christmas, I saw this on Amazon. This kit was on Amazon for uh, like 287 bucks or 289 bucks, something like that. Really good deal on that. Unfortunately, my wife didn't act quickly on it. And when she finally got around, she said, Hey, isn't this the link you sent me? Isn't this the one? And I said, Yeah. It had gone up to 305 right before uh, Christmas, like within the two weeks before Christmas, it went to 305. I looked everywhere. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find that original deal I found for the 280 something anywhere. So I said, well, you know, the thing is, if we get it through Home Depot, A, you're going to pay more money for it. B, Home Depot, my local ones and all the ones in this area, I mean, I, I looked all around. Nobody was stocking this kit with the two batteries. All Home Depot tend to have in stock was this kit with one battery, and I believe it was $299. So basically for $30 more, you get a second battery, and these batteries are not cheap. So keep that in mind. Try and look for this kit that gives you the extra battery because the value is better. Oh, by the way, the other thing Home Depot was doing, which was kind of annoying, was all of them had in stock the bare tool. Now, I guess they do that because they figure there might be guys out there who are buying all kinds of DeWalt kits that use these batteries and already have the charger and the batteries and just want to add a grinder to their arsenal of tools. I do not have any um, of these tools, these FlexVolt tools. However... My my big DeWalt screw gun, maybe I do actually have a tool, but I got this used. This is in a roll this was in a, a draw of a rollaway toolbox that I bought with a whole bunch of machinist tools a while back. And I didn't think much of it back then. I was like, eh, another another cordless screw gun. Well, since I've had this thing, I can't believe how much I like it. I can't believe how much the um how good the batteries uh, hold up, holds a lot of power. 
my uh, my other go-to gun for those of you who follow my channel is this uh, the battery's out of it right now is this Milwaukee which uses the M12 so this is a lot less power and a lot less runtime but I have two batteries for it the batteries charge real quick and this is nice and small you see how small it is I could throw this in my tool bag and it's not all cumbersome but you know if you're running like a wire wheel or something or screwing a whole bunch of screws one after the other boy you can't beat this thing oops all right so let's take a look at what we got. So I always get a kick out of when the boxes look like, there's a biff in the box here, but I always get a kick when the boxes look like they've already been opened somewhere. I often wonder whether or not like the post office or somebody is opening these things for safety. Well, nothing else in there. Oh, here we go. So here's the... Uh, Here's a little diagram on the back, basically showing you, oh, you know, they're stuffing all of these cells in there. So the power is 20 volt max, 60 volt max, and 120 volt max tools. Well, the other possibility is maybe they do actually have some tools that are running on 60 or 120 volt DC. And then what they would do is they would have some way that the connections on the battery depending on what device you plug it into it would use different terminals to be able to either do a uh, uh, either take those 20 volt internal packs and put them in series because 320 volts in series gives you 60 volts but 320 volts in parallel gives you 20 volts but just gives you more runtime more reserve power more milliamp hours so here's the tool Okay, looks pretty. Oh, I like that. There's a screen over this to try and keep the cooling air that's being pulled in clean. All right. Got the guard. Oh, the second guard. So that was another big reason why I decided on this one. This one uh, ergonomically was really popular. Uh, I think because of the way the battery slants back and just the size of the handle. Um, but the other thing about this one was that this one, you can put a 6-inch cutting disc on this and really go to town with cutting metal. So that this is the guard for the 6-inch cutting disc. And here's our handle. Of course, you can put it on the other side if you're, you know, depending on if you're lefty or righty or if you have, depending on the job you're doing. There's the charger. Okay. Oh, look at that. They even, they even to get you started, they even give you a uh, grinding disc. Got an Allen wrench. Oh, that's interesting. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing here? Now, how smart is that? Somebody, somebody using their brain. Um, all right, so every angle grinder that I own comes with a special wrench that has two pins that engage two holes on this locking nut. Looks like this, right? Okay. So it's got two pins on there. So the diameter of these pins and the spacing of these pins makes this unique to whatever angle grinder it belongs to. And I can tell you from experience, I'll have a Milwaukee, it'll be different than the Hitachi, than the DeWalt, than the Makita. I've got several different brands of angle grinders and they all have their own little idea. It's a non-standard wrench, okay? So it's kind of a pain in the butt because, A, you have to go looking for this wrench whenever you need to do a change. And, B, if, you know, well, I mean, if the wrench goes missing, it's a pain in the butt, right? And they do happen to have a way of going missing or just temporarily misplaced. So what these guys did was they said, let's put two socket holes that a standard Allen wrench fits into all right and this is 
your wrench for tightening this thing. So, hey, you misplaced this? No problem. Just go grab your Allen wrench kit and grab another one. I mean, that, that right there. Hell, that right there is worth the price of admission to my video. And all we have left in the carry bag are the aforementioned two batteries. Oh my god, what the hell's going on with this? Yeah. Hmm. Alright, we got a little sticker on here. Please remove before use. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't know, this just seems like... Well, all else fails, read the instructions. There's a thing on here telling me use with and then transport. Oh, okay. So this comes off all the way. Press the button, dummy. Oh, okay. So these are just little safety guards. And what they're warning you about is they're saying, hey, if you're going to transport this off of the tool, like you're going to throw this in the tool bag and there's going to be maybe other stuff in the tool bag, they want you to put these plastic guards on. Um, obvious reason for that would be if you just throw this in the tool bag and by some strange chance something actually managed, to, you know, I mean, it'd be a freak occurrence, but if something was able to get in here and touch these contacts. Oh, and look at that. We've got, uh, okay, we've got five contacts in there b plus and b minus and then uh th id c1 c2 c3 and c4 so now next thing i gotta do is i gotta check and see how to treat these batteries been a while since i bought a new tool battery uh rechargeable tool and uh i just want to make sure because you know on a lot of these tools they tell you before you do anything that you should recharge that you should fully charge the batteries before you do anything. Recharge only with the charges specified. All right, guys, I found what I was looking for, and I got to tell you, this is a pet peeve I have, and, and this is um, kind of stupid, in my opinion. Um, all right, so what what they should do is, and I've seen this in other tools and stuff. Um, is, you know, you'll get the full owner's manual and, you know, this is a thick book because it's got several languages in it and everything and a whole bunch of other stuff. But what they should do is they should, they should have a quick start guide. There should be a one page guide because you're going to get a lot of people that open up something like this and they don't read the whole manual cover to cover before they start using it. Yeah. Shocking as it may seem. So I actually saw this one page right here, and I thought, oh, maybe this is the quick start guide. But all this is, is this is some kind of a warning about wireless devices and crap. So they're just meet, meeting some sort of uh, certification requirement by putting that piece of crap in there. But there's no quick start guide. And the reason why I think that's important is because, you know, this is... Uh, page one, page two, page three safety instructions and then you get into uh, over here read all instructions battery and charger a whole bunch of stuff about the batteries about the charger doesn't say anything that i'm looking for yet it said there is a slight mention that the batteries are not fully charged when it's shipped and it says to, uh, to basically follow the instructions for the batteries then you get way over here all right i'm on page eight page eight of this booklet charging a battery and then it goes in and explains about charging the battery. And right here, in small print, it says, well, the whole book's in small print. But here's the important part right here. Note, to ensure maximum performance and life of lithium-ion battery packs, charge the battery pack fully before first use. Maximum performance and life. So lithium-ion battery packs are not supposed to have memory effect which is a problem that they had with the old NICAD battery packs and nickel cad cadmium but they're basically telling you right here 
for maximum performance, which we want, and especially maximum life, we want these batteries to last a while because they're so damn expensive, you should do this. You should fully charge these batteries right out of the package before you do anything. And I'll tell you right now, a lot of guys are just going to come and they're going to take this thing and they're going to throw this on here like this. Okay? And they're going to go... Oh, it runs! And they're going to go to town and start using the thing. All right? Not this guy. So I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Face protector. The reason why you want this instead of just safety glasses is because if this wheel decides to shatter, your eyes will be protected, but you'll still get a good sized chunk of this in your face. You won't like it. So, all you're going to do to start this, it's got a safety feature right here mm -hmm. so you can't accidentally pull the trigger. You have to pull this down like this, and it works, okay? The guard, you want to keep it, you want to cut like this, okay? So that the guard. Basically, it's keeping the sparks from coming back at you. If you want to adjust the guard, you just flip this lever down. I'm sorry, no, you press it. Press this lever, mm -hmm. and it swivels. A lot easier than my old one. Mm -hmm. the, old one you to... the old one, you had to loosen the thing. And... All right. So, hold on to that. So, cut this, start by cutting this off. About eight pieces when you're done. Okay. Now listen. If you, for some reason, if you go to put this down, make sure it stops spinning before you put it down anywhere. The other thing too, when you're cutting, you're going into the cut. Don't turn. Don't try and turn it while it's in the cut, because that's a good way to make this wheel shatter. If this wheel gets too far worn down. Let me know and I'll get you a new wheel and put a new one on there, okay? What size hat do you wear? I don't know, I don't wear hats. <laughs> nope. 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 Too small? Yeah. It's just not going on my head. It's too strong. Good enough. Put the ear protection on. Kind of crooked. Yeah. Is it on good? What? Is it on good? Yeah. Go ahead. Good? Yeah, and I cut the big one in half. Over here? No. What you want to do, since this is nice enough, cut here first, then cut here. Then do the same thing on this side. It would be easier. What? Yeah, it would be easier if it was like this. Should just break off now. 
There you go. Cut this right here. This is going to want to sag like this, and it's going to want to pinch that blade. So that's why you want to have that part not really supported. It takes time, but you already got a lot better from when you first started. So I imagine. You're going to work in metal fabrication and do a lot of welding and stuff. You're going to become very acquainted with one of these. All right. Thank you. What else? <laughs> what else do you want? You want to cut more stuff up? No. What else are we going to do? I don't know. All right. So I guess we're going to conclude this, uh, this new tool review here. I know it wasn't a traditional tool review we may not have run it through all the paces that everybody would want my initial thoughts are I really like it um, the one thing I noticed right off the bat is the uh, brushless DC motor it sounds very different uh, it's not quiet necessarily but the sound isn't as harsh as any of my electric grinders and I've got all brands I've got uh, I've got a Makita I've got a Ryobi I've got a Hitachi and I've got a Milwaukee and they all have a very similar sound to them when they're running. Uh, they're all corded. This being with the DC brushless motor, it's just got a, a different sound to it. Obviously, there's different RPMs going on as far as inside here. At the wheel, I'm sure the RPMs are about the same. I really like a couple of features on this thing that I didn't even realize. This easy to push button to adjust the guard. I, I really like that. It's got locking detents. For it too. On one of my other models, you got to flip a lever and it unlocks a clamp, and that thing's never really clamping as well as it should. I, I really like this tool list. There are holes here, so you could use a tool, and you could just use a regular Allen wrench to actually get more leverage. But for the most part, this appears to be a completely toolless uh, change for changing from discs to whatnot. Now, you see, that's tightened up quite a bit from using it, so I'm going to have to use an Allen wrench to unlock it. But as far as putting it back on, all I had to do was finger tighten it, and that thing tightened up on its own. The, the nut is just not a regular straight nut. There's a spring-loaded little uh, plate behind there. seems to really help with alignment. Battery? What can I say? The battery, we've done you know, quite a bit of work with it using the little built-in gauge on the back of the battery. It's showing me uh, two out of three LEDs still lit, so... You know, there's somewhere around two-thirds or somewhere around 60% or more battery life left in this thing. And the beauty of it, this is, it came with the kit that I bought that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you want to look for. One of the big things is it comes with two batteries. So if this battery dies, I can flip the other battery on here and before, and put this one on the charger, and because these charge so quickly now, the lithium-ion technology, you, you're pretty much going to be still using the, the, the battery. The other one's going to be charged up by the time you get done using the whole battery. Unless you're just constantly cutting and grinding. Which, But yeah, uh, ergonomically it feels good. There's obviously there's a threaded hole on the other side here. So if you're a lefty, you could uh, 
change the handle over to this side. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. What more could I say? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up or like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.